Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So for those of you who are new coming to my channel, especially for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I am your life and relationship strategist. I am helping all of you guys out there to get your relationships to back together or hold them together, okay? So we are going to talk about this book right here, Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts, the seven questions that you should ask before and after you get married. Stay tuned. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back to I Love Me, Me, Me. Again, my name is Marshawn. For those of you who are new to my channel, so we are going to do a book review today, Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts by Dr. Les and Leslie Parrott. I thought that that was just funny just because their names is Les and Leslie. And um, I have to say that this book right here, I did a, um, I listened to it on audiobook first. So... I listened to it and I was like, let me see what they have to offer. If it's good enough, then I will purchase the hard copy. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that. I was out walking my daughter when I first started to listen to this book on audio and I found myself stopping so much because I was trying to take notes because I knew I wanted to come here and um, showcase it and share it with you guys so you can pick it up, learn some tips and tools yourself to implement into your own relationship. And I was just like, you know what, this book is just too good. I need that hard cover, okay? I mean, when I say I was like walking and I was like, oh, let me stop, and I was walking, and then I was like, oh, let me stop, and I was walking, and I was like, oh, and I was just like, you know what, this is too much. For the longest time, I didn't even finish listening to this book on audio because it was just too good, and I had to basically be able to sit down and take notes. So finally, I was just like, you know what? I need to order that hardcover for real. And so um, I did finish the audio portion of it, but I definitely went back and actually read this as well because it just has so much juicy information in this book, like so much. Um, the audio book was fun to listen to. Uh, the couple actually read the book and they really had a lot of jokes and stuff in there. And it's just their humor. <clears throat> It also comes with um, a his and her separate study guides. If you want to purchase those as well, gives you a lot more meat and potatoes. I did not get those. Um, it comes with a video series at some point if you want to like sit down and watch it with your spouse or watch it with the group and you guys can talk about it. So this 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 right here comes with a lot. Um, the book itself has, um, it's actually relatively short, but it took me a while to read it and to listen to it because I wanted to soak up the information. And so it has actually a 149 pages. When I say that this book is action packed, okay, it's not action packed, but it's definitely filled with so much information. Like seriously, I cannot say that enough. I have so much highlighted material in here. So we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and jump into some of the areas. Um, so I wanted to read to you the four marriage myths, the four marriage myths, which is the first one, we expect exactly the same things from marriage myth for sure the second one is everything good in our relationship will get better myth you have to work at it the third thing everything bad in my life will disappear absolutely not you have to address those things and then get rid of them while you, um, by the by you two talking the thing out so that's definitely a myth if it's bad before you get married it's gonna be exponentially bad after you get married number four my spouse will make me whole no, they won't. You got to make yourself whole. You got to come into the relationship as a whole person. Actually, both of you have to come into the relationship as a whole person. And um, that way you guys can build your relationship together. Um, if it's unequal, you guys are going to have so many issues. Um, and even when your relationship is stable and you guys are happy-go-lucky before you get married, it's something about that piece of paper that just makes the first year ridiculous <laughs> it's ridiculous they actually talk about it here in this book um it's something about the 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 whole i want to call it competition um what's the word i'm looking for it's blanking it's blanking right now anyway i'm gonna move on if i come back to that word i'm gonna definitely talk about it um so we're talking about the love loves triangle loves triangle which includes um passion intimacy and commitment and I want to read to you a little bit about that as well 
<coughs> um, so I just told you what the model is, the three sides. Passion is the motivational side of the triangle. Um, it's the spine tingling sensation that moves us toward romance. Passion is central and sexual, characterized by physiological arousal and intense desire for physical affection. Um, intimacy. Intimacy is the emotional side of love's triangle. Love without intimacy is only hormonal illusion. One cannot desire another person over the long haul without really knowing that person. Intimacy has a best friend or soulmate quality to it. We all want someone to, who knows us better than anyone else and still accepts us. And we want someone who holds nothing back from us, someone who trusts us with their personal secrets. Intimacy fills our heart's deepest longings for closeness and acceptance. And then finally, commitment. The cognitive and willful side of the love triangle. Commitment looks toward a future that cannot be seen and promises to be there until death. Commitment creates a small island of certainty in the swirling waters of uncertainty. As the mooring of marriage, commitment secures love for our partner when passion burns low and when turbulent times and fierce impulses overtake us. Commitment says, I love you because you are you, not because of what you do or how I feel. The longevity of love and the health of a marriage depend mightily on the strength of commitment. Yes, it does, because um, there are definitely going to be times that you want to just rip each other's head off. Like, seriously, you will not like that, like your partner. You will not like your spouse sometimes. You will not want to go home to them sometimes. But definitely, you still have to be committed and say, you know what? I don't like them today. I'm not feeling them today, but I still got to go home. Really, it really is about the commitment. Um, passion and intimacy, um, they have to be there as well, but they... Ebb and flow, ebb and flow, but that commitment has to be there all day, every day. Don't matter how mad you are. Don't matter how upset you are. It don't matter how many fights you guys get into, especially if you are actively working toward getting rid of why you guys are fighting or learning how to e learning how to fight effectively. Because now I want to move on to the love styles. There are four love styles according to this book. They have the romantic love, foolish love, um, companionable love, and consummate love. Okay, so romantic love. It relies on the combination of intimacy and passion and is physical attraction mixed with a deep sense of caring. But commitment takes a back seat in romantic love. Again, we need the commitment. You actually need all pieces of the puzzle, but if you're not committed, then what we doing, right? What, what we doing? All right, foolish love. Is a combination of passionate and commitment, but this time intimacy is mostly absent. It is foolish in the sense that a commitment is made on the basis of passion without the stabilizing element of intimate knowledge. Then you have companionable love, which um, is a combination of intimacy and commitment with passion fading in the background. It is essentially a long-term committed friendship. <laughs> Um, but successful marriages actually demand more. Even when a romantic, foolish, or companionable love style becomes mo um, monetarily predominant. So the one, the love that we all want and actually move toward and should be moving toward is the consummate love, which actually is the full combination of love's three components, which is passion, intimacy, and commitment. Consummate love is the goal toward which every marriage strives, and most marriages actually achieve it at least for a time. This one actually um, ebbs, and flow as, ebbs and flows as well. Maintaining cons consummate love, however, is where many marriages falter. Uh, marriage partners do not lock into consummate love once and for all, for love styles in marriage actually change. At times, for one spouse, some elements become stronger than others, and the style of loving um, of loving emergence that is not in step with the other partner's style. And I just want to show you, let me see if it actually um, <clears throat> focuses in on the pictures. 
let's see so that's um the one for for romantic love which again is missing the commitment and then the foolish love which is passionate commitment and you're missing intimacy and let's see here and then we have the um, companionable love which actually has intimacy and commitment and, and it is missing passion but the one that we are all striving for is actually this one over here which is the consummate love which if you can pay attention and actually see that all three sides are actually equal and of course they are all there as well so that is the one that we are all searching for which is the consummate love and then I'm gonna wrap this up with reading the secret to couples happiness let me go ahead and wrap it up with this like I said this this book got so much juice in it, it's just ridiculous so <clears throat> Research reveals that the level of a couple's joy is determined by each partner's ability to adjust to things beyond his or her control. Every happy couple has learned to find the right attitude in spite of the conditions they find themselves in. So it's all about how you actually can adjust to the things that you cannot control when you're saying how happy you are. And that is what research is actually showing. So that is that are, those are not just my words. Those are not just their words. This is what the research is actually telling us. I definitely.